All right, guys, welcome to uh, First Corinthians. Uh, I know it's been a little while, uh, exactly a month since uh, I've been on the channel. Uh, you know, we rotate, everybody takes a week, but I wanna thank um, uh, Joey for opening this up, Steve for coming before me. I'm gonna do uh, 1 Corinthians 5 through 12. Scotty's gonna shut us down in Corinthians and then move on to um, Psalms. So uh, got our team together, everybody's rocking and rolling. I hope everybody's doing well since the last time I saw you. It's been a busy summer. I know everybody's uh, coming and going and, and uh, getting crazy. I'm getting ready to take my daughter back to school. Uh, she lived with me all summer. She's getting ready to go back to FSU. Gonna have a great time her junior year. Most of you know, uh, my son has been out of the house for a while. He lives up in Bowling Green. Uh, gonna look at uh, getting a new job. So prayers for my son and prayers for my daughter. If you guys have time in your morning tea time to throw a couple prayers our way, we would we would definitely appreciate it. All right, first of all, before I get started, I wanna read this, this uh, something in my Bible that just jumped out at me, but it's a little paragraph. It says, a boy who has a father who is committed to his mother will have a tremendous advantage when he becomes a husband. He will have an intuitive understanding that his commitment in marriage is not a right to be happy, but to demonstrate a willingness to be responsible, even when it's inconvenient, even when it crowds out his personal happiness. In 1 Corinthians, you know, the what you think is right may have an adverse effect on the people around you. And I, I skip that a lot through the, the whole, the whole uh, chapter of Corinthians. Anyway, I'm gonna go uh, chapter five. My two verses are verses seven and eight. Let's read God's word. Get rid of the old yeast that you may be a new batch without yeast as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the festival, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with bread without yeast, the bread of sincerity and truth. Two good words. Okay, my reveal. And, and I just went over the definitions basically of leaven and unleaven. So leaven, a substance yeast used to make dough rise. We all know that. Or permanent and modify or transform something for the better. Modify or transform something for the better is leaven. Unleavened, no yeast, bread will not rise. The religious part of this is you shall not, you shall eat nothing leavened. In all your dwelling places, you shall eat unleavened bread in your home. It says the Jews removed all leaven from their homes for a whole week. The church should have a concern to remove unrepentant sinners. Our Christian lives should be like purity from leaven. Salvation, listen to this, salvation in sin is not possible. Salvation in sin is not possible. It must always be salvation from sin. Not in sin, but from sin. My implementation, my eye. In the grip. I like the last two words in this passage sincerity and truth. These two words are pretty strong guardrails for our Christian faith, our Christian lives. Guys, when, when we live our lives, we want to we want to think about living inside the guardrails and not bumping into them and not going outside of them. Think of how much simpler life would be if we just stayed in our lane and, and we, we, we did the things in our lives that were godly and that glorified him, period. 
Think of how simple that would be, not, not to get outside those guardrails. Think of our relationship with our, our wives. Think of the relationship with our kids, the relationship with our friends, the relationship with our Lord. It goes on and on, right? My prayer. Uh, my Lord, allow all of us to be between the guardrails in our Christian lives. Allow everybody. That's my prayer for everybody. Uh, but it's up to you, right? As it said in what I read before, um, you have to think about yourself, your, your others around you before you think about yourself. What's good for you may not be good for the people who are the most important to you. Just, I'm going to leave you with that. Uh, let's pray. Lord, uh, I want to pray for uh, all my all my brothers out here who are, are on this uh, on this YouTube and on this channel and and trying to gleam a little bit more of, of your love and and how can we do that, Lord? Well, we can stay we can stay inside these guardrails. We can make life simpler. We can have a great relationship with you. We can find an in his grip in his grip group that we can be part of. And uh, and Lord, we just look so forward to see what you can do with us when we are abiding and obeying by your rules, Lord. We love you and we do this in your name, amen. All right, guys, I will see you tomorrow.